before I start this video, I want to ask you to support me by subscribing to my channel. And please like this video if you find it helpful. And of course, if you have some questions or suggestions, welcome to the comments. And we jump right in. Hi everyone! Let's dive into dependency injection, a fundamental part of the Symfony framework. It's a great way to break your code into smaller, reusable pieces and make it easier to manage the relationships between different parts of your application. Think of dependency injection as the Lego bricks of your Symfony application. It automates the process of putting these bricks together, so you can focus on building your app without getting bogged down in the details. And we will start from service container. The service container in Symfony is a powerful tool that allows you to manage the life cycle of your services. It stores objects, services that your application needs and is responsible for creating and injecting the services when required. A service in Symfony is simply a PHP object that performs a specific task. For example, sending emails, logging, and so on. Services are often reusable and shared across different parts of your application. And service container, it holds and manages these services. Instead of manually instancing services, which can become difficult to manage as the number of dependencies grows, Symfony's services container does this for you automatically. So, when a PHP class, for example a controller, requests a service from the service container, it sends a service request. These requests go to the service container, which manages all registered services in the application. The service container receives the request and determines which service is needed. It then uses the dependency injection mechanism to create or retrieve the requested service if it already exists. After that, the service container returns the requested service back to the PHP class via the service response. Now this class can use the obtained service to perform its logic. Whether it's data processing, interacting with the database or any other functionality. So, the service container allows the class to dynamically request and receive necessary dependencies, simplifying dependency management and enhancing code modularity. In Symfony, a variety of built-in services manage essential tasks such as email sending, logging, database interactions, sessions and routing. The services are automatically registered in the service container and can be injected in your classes when needed. Most services originate from bundles. Bundles in Symfony are like plugins that extend the framework's functionality. Each bundle registers its own services. For example, Monolog bundle provides a logger service which is used for logging activities. To find all available services that you can inject into your classes, you can run. This command lists services that are registered in the container and available for dependency injection. For detailed explanation of each built-in service, you can refer to the official Symfony documentation, which provides insights on specific services, their configuration and use cases. So, what are the main methods of fetching and using services? Symfony offers several ways to fetch and use services from the service container, each suited to different scenarios. Next, I'll tell you about the primary methods of handling services within your Symfony applications. First method is action method injection in controllers. In Symfony controllers, you can directly type in services as method arguments. Symfony automatically injects these services into your controller's action methods. This is possible due to Symfony's action auto wiring mechanism, which simplifies dependency management in controllers. 
I'll show you example with monolog bundle, which was installed in this project earlier. This bundle is used for login. In this case, Symfony resolves the logger interface dependency and injects it directly into the log info method of the controller. This method is only available in controllers. Second method is constructor injection. For other PHP classes, such as services, unit listeners, or command handlers, constructor injection is the most common and recommended approach. By type hinting the service in the constructor, Symfony will automatically inject the required dependencies when the object is created. In this case, the logger interface is injected into the constructor of the login service class, allowing the service to be used throughout the class. There are also a few methods uh, how you can inject dependencies like uh, setter injection or manual fetching from the service container, but they are not recommended and uh, we will not delve into it. As you can see, we have created a custom service uh, that we were able to use uh, a method uh, argument in a controller action, just as we did with uh, Symfony's built-in services. As you can see, there was no need to register the service additionally, and this is all thanks to Symfony's default settings. Let's turn to the services.yml file. So you can see that outer wire was defined as true, 
This uh, setting instructs Symfony to automatically inject dependencies into your services based on their constructor arguments or properties. It analyzes the class definition and identifies dependencies that match available services or parameters. Autoconfigure also was defined as true. Uh, the settings tell Symfony to automatically register your services as appropriate components, such as commands, even subscribers or other system elements. It scans the class definition for relevant annotations or interfaces that indicate its role. Uh, and here, uh, this namespace declaration defines a service group that includes all classes within the SRC directory uh, except source, uh, which was uh, explicitly excluded. This array specifies directories or classes that should be excluded from automatic service registration. In this case, it excluded dependency injection, entity, and kernel. Directories to prevent potential conflicts or unintended side effects. So, how after wiring works? First, dependency identification. When a service is requested, Symfony examines its constructor arguments or properties to determine its dependencies. Second, dependency matching. Symfony searches for matching services or parameters based on their names or types. And third, dependency injection. If a matching dependency is found, Symfony automatically injects it to the services constructor or property. Autowiring allows you to automatically create and inject dependencies between services. Symfony uses the principle of lazy initialization. A service is created only when it is actually needed. This means that if you don't use a service in your code, the container won't waste resources on creating it. Moreover, only one instance is created for each service, which is then reused for subsequent requests. This approach optimizes memory usage and improves application performance. In Symfony, services can be registered in two main ways. Using YML configuration or PHP attributes. Next, I'll explain both approaches. With YML configuration, you define services in a services.yml file, here read, or similar YML files where you specify how services should be constructed, configured, and used in your Symfony application. Here's how you can do it. Basic service registration. You define a service by specifying its class and optionally its arguments or other configuration. Configuring arguments. You can configure the arguments that will be passed to the services constructor. Tags and aliases. YML configuration allows you to add tags to services, which can be useful for tagging event listeners or other special services. Auto wiring and auto configuration. You can enable auto wiring and auto configuration to automatically inject dependencies and register services based on their interfaces. In Symfony, starting from version 5.2, the ability to register services directly within classes using special PHP 8 attributes was introduced. This significantly simplifies the configuration process and makes the code more readable. Attribute AutoConfigure tag This attribute allows you to automatically add tags to a service. Tags are used for grouping services and for locating them when needed. Attribute auto configure. A more flexible attribute that allows you to configure various service parameters, such as its name, public visibility, and so on. These attributes help reduce the need for external configuration files, making service registration more integrated with the code itself. 
When is manual service registration necessary? While most services are registered automatically, manual configuration is still required in certain scenarios. These include specific argument configuration. Autowiring can automatically resolve dependencies based on types, but for passing specific arguments or settings to a service constructor, manual configuration is necessary. In this example, we register a service with a specific argument that is passed to the constructor. Additionally, you can define parameter in the config package parameters.yml file, multiple implementation of a single interface. When multiple classes implement the same interface, Symfony cannot automatically determine the correct service to inject. In such cases, you need to explicitly specify which service to use. You can then fetch all services with the logger service tag in your code. Tags for service processing. Sometimes services need to be registered with specific tags for subsequent processing. For example, when you need to collect multiple services into a collection or subscribe a service to an event. In this example, the user registered listener will listen to the user registered event. Public and private services. Autowiring works with private services, but if a service needs to be public, directly accessible from the container, it must be explicitly registered. Now the service can be accessed directly from the container. Conditional services creation. Sometimes services need to be created only under specific conditions, such as depending on the environment, for example, def or prod, or the presence of certain parameters. This is difficult to achieve solely with autowiring. The service will only be loaded in the dev environment. Overriding existing services. If you need to overwrite a default service of Symfony or any bundle, you need to manually register a new service that will replace the original one. Here the standard mailer service is replaced with custom mailer. Service lifecycle management. Autowiring cannot always provide precise control over a service's lifetime, whereas manual registration allows for explicit specification. With this approach, each time the service is requested from the container, a new instance is created. And for today, it's all. I hope you enjoy this video and see you next time.